Hey everyone, welcome to Relatively Refined. My name is Paula and I am so glad that you're joining me today. Today's video is a fun one. I am going to share with you what I've done inside my house so far for fall in terms of decorating it and just kind of getting it ready for the fall and holiday seasons. And I'm also gonna share a really fun and very easy little craft project. And then of course, we will have our relatively refined segment at the end where we share our viewers treasures. So stick around, we're going to have fun. Let's get started with the project. What I'm going to do is to turn this little, I think, individual French onion soup container or bowl, covered bowl, into a small sewing kit. This little tiny casserole dish or soup dish matches the pattern of dishes that my mother collects. And I thought it would be really fun to repurpose it into a small sewing kit that she could keep on her kitchen counter. You're always looking for safety pins or a thread, needle and thread, a um, measuring tape, a little pair of scissors, things like that when you're in the kitchen. And if you have them in something that's useful and decorative, you're much more likely to keep it out and then you'll know where things are. So the first order of business was to create the base for the pin cushion part of the sewing kit. I'm going to make the pin cushion on the inside of the lid so that when you put the lid on top of the little dish, the pin cushion is actually facing the inside of the dish. I wanted to make the cardboard base just barely fit over that inner lip on the inside of the lid. I simply used an old shoebox lid that I had and cut it out of that. Then next I had to pick a fabric. This fabric I thought was adorable and matched the little country feel of that small dish perfectly. It's actually an old pillowcase that I got at the Goodwill bins. The bins is also known as the Goodwill outlet and they have these big huge bins of items that you just dig through and you pay by the pound. I believe at our bins, the price is $1.99 a pound. So I couldn't find any fabric that I liked. And so I thought, well, why don't I repurpose an old shirt or something? So I went to the bins and I found this pillowcase and I think it probably cost me 50 cents. And it, there's a fair amount of fabric. So now I just cut out a square that is large enough to cover the cardboard base as well as some stuffing that will form the pin cushion. So I just balled up a little bit of the stuffing and then I'm stretching that fabric over the top of it and then I'll adhere it or fasten it underneath. Now I used a rubber band because I was making this kind of a no-sew project, but really probably a better idea would be to put a running stitch around the outside of that fabric circle and then stuff it and pull it tight. But I'll try that in the next one and I'll report back about whether or not that was easier. So here you see me forming the pin cushion part of it. Once I have that all rubber banded down and nice and tight, I'm going to glue it to the inside of that lid. So what I wanted to do is first check to make sure that once that pin cushion was in there, the lid would actually still fit back on the little bowl and it did. So I'm simply running a bead of hot glue around the lid and a little bit on the inside and then I'm going to put that pin cushion right there and just hold it until that glue dries. You could use a combination of hot glue and E6000 to get a really secure hold, but I think hot glue is probably strong enough to keep that in place. And also then if you decided that you wanted to reuse that vessel for something else, you could very easily pull off the hot glue. So there you see me, I'm just holding it in place until it's dry and, and you know set. And that is what will form the pincushion part of 
the sewing kit. And that's really all of the um, crafty part of the whole project. The rest is simply to fill it with little bits and bobs of sewing. Now, I'll show you, I'm showing you here how it fits perfectly right inside. What I did was I bought a small little sewing kit. Um, I think I got this at Walmart. It was maybe $1.99. But what I would really like to do is to collect little vintage sewing notions, a really cute pair of sewing scissors, maybe an old thimble, some spools of thread, and so forth, and put those in there. But I didn't have any of those on hand. And so to demonstrate how it could be used, I simply purchased this little tiny sewing kit. And then I just put the sewing, the contents of the sewing kit right inside the container and popped the lid on. I would like to get some straight pins to put in there as well, but how cute is that? You would never know that that was a sewing kit if you saw that sitting out on a countertop. And there it is. And you could repurpose any kinds of vessels that have a lid. A sugar bowl, a French onion soup bowl, anything that has a lid. Even a small teapot would be really very cute to do this with. Now, one last step. In order to give it a more finished edge, I thought what I would do is just glue a little piece of satin ribbon around the outside edge of the pin cushion part, just to make it look a little more finished. If I had some rickrack on hand, I would have used that because I think that would be really cute, but I didn't. So what I did instead was to take a piece of satin ribbon fold it in half and glue it down so that it was half the width that it was. And then I'm simply going to glue that satin ribbon around the outside edge of the lid where the pin cushion meets the lid. As I said, just to give it a more finished look. I think also, you could use some really cute vintage um, sewing trim. You could do something that had um, like a little lace design in it, any number of things, depending on the vessel. But I, for simplicity's sake, I just used this piece of satin ribbon, as I said, and fold it in half. And now I'm just going to measure around the outside to make sure that it fits. And then I'll take my hot glue gun again and run a bead of glue around it and just glue that satin ribbon around the outside edge to give it a nice finished look. Overall, this was a really easy project and really very fun. I mean, it's something that you can sit down and do from start to finish in probably 30 minutes. As I said, I think the next time I do it, I'm going to use a running stitch instead of the rubber band to cinch up the pincushion part of the project. I think that would just, um, it leaves less bulk on the inside to glue down. Like I have that rubber band and if that rubber band should let loose, then um, you know it's possible that this could come apart. Whereas if I sewed it with a running stitch, I don't think that I would run into that issue. But that's really the only adjustment I would make. And um, here you see me, I'm still running that bead of glue around the outside edge. And once that's all done, I will show you the finished product. Hot glue leaves those glue strings that I'm constantly picking off, but isn't that adorable? And then here you see it fits right on top of the container. Close it up. Nobody knows that it's a sewing kit. You can leave it out and it's just adorable. So this is what that container looks like from the outside. And as I said, it matches this dinnerware that my mom collects. And I think this will look adorable on her countertop. And it will keep a needle and thread and pins and a measuring tape and whatever else you need right at the ready. Now I 
would like to welcome you into my home for my fall home tour. I really decorate mostly the downstairs in my home and I'm starting right here in my kitchen and as you can see I have my gorgeous fall apron hanging on my pantry door. I thrifted that apron this summer and I knew it would be perfect for fall. On the counters, which I do like to keep decorated minimally, I have that beautiful ceramic pumpkin. I actually got that at Walmart a few years ago. It's from Better Homes and Gardens. My Nora Fleming tray with our football charm on it, because in the South, in the fall, football is king. And then I have this beautiful cooking French book, which just has gorgeous fall tones and a fall feel to it. I got that at the Goodwill bins, believe it or not. And my copper Moscow mule mugs. And then here I just have my um, vintage kitchen utensils in this gorgeous crock. I love this big crock on the counter. I think it looks so pretty with those rolling pins and other utensils in it. On my stove top, I have that beautiful copper kettle, which I did thrift as well. And I love that copper kettle. I think I paid like $4 for it and that beautiful fall tray in the back. And then the only other decor I have is over here um, on the other side of the counter. I have those mushroom salt and pepper shakers that I got at Goodwill because, you know, mushrooms are kind of fall-esque, I think. You see a lot of mushrooms in fall decor, especially now. And then this beautiful um, pecan pie dish that I recently thrifted. I love that. I have a cherry pie one as well. I'd love to collect a pumpkin one if I could find it. And then over here on my stove, I have those beautiful tea towels that I thrifted at Goodwill. They are originally from Williams-Sonoma, and I think they are absolutely beautiful. I love the colors and that beautiful bird and fruit pattern. So here's an overview of what my back counter looks like. And as I said, I do like to keep it kind of minimal in terms of decor because we do cook a lot in this kitchen. And my daughter loves to cook and bake and I love to cook. So I like to keep it as clean as I can. Over here, I have another crock, which we use to put our wine bottle in and catch the drips if there were to be any. And then I have this really pretty copper watering can that I just got recently at Walmart of all places. I absolutely love it. And then these planters are my basil and thyme that I brought in from the back porch. I thrifted those planters, oh, a while ago, many months ago, actually, for a couple dollars each, and I think they are so pretty. And then, of course, I have my gratitude or grace picture up there and my little spice rack. But look how pretty these planters are. They have little cherubs on them. And then I have those herbs right there in the kitchen at the ready whenever I need them. And that's essentially all of the decor that I have on my kitchen. I did pull out my little ghost sponge holder. It's probably a bit too early for Halloween, but he's so darn cute, I couldn't resist. And then I have a Bath and Body Works fall candle burning. I believe that one is leaves and it smells so, so good. But my newest discovery in the candle department is their blueberry maple pancakes candle or blueberry maple waffles. It's fabulous. Over here on our wine rack, I just have a few little items. I have this beautiful terracotta teapot sitting on top of these little plates that a viewer, Deborah, sent me all the way from England and I absolutely love them. I thrifted that little picture and then I purchased the little spaniel figurine from Stone Cottage Home who also has a YouTube channel and she also has an online store and I've been wanting one of those forever. That white pumpkin is from the Dollar Tree several years ago and then lastly over in the corner I have a beautiful stoneware platter propped up on an easel behind my whatever kind of plant that is. Looks like Swiss cheese almost. Monstera, a Monstera plant maybe, I think. 
On my table, I have just very minimal decor, but I think it's really pretty. The wooden placemat I use as a base, and I thrifted that. I have my Nora Fleming salt and pepper shakers with the pumpkin charm in them, some brass candlesticks that, in the shape of leaves, and that kind of mid-century modern basket holding some cloth napkins. There's Hazel after her haircut. <laughs> Over here on this desk, again, not a ton of decor, but just a few items to remind us that it's fall and the seasons are changing. That brass quail I thrifted from Goodwill probably a year and a half ago, I'd say. Those beautiful old books I purchased from a, uh, on Instagram from 1100 West is the account. She has beautiful things. And that gorgeous painting was a Facebook marketplace find probably four years ago. And then of course, I have my miniature tea set that I just love. So there's a quick look at that desk. And then around the corner from my desk is a little side table with some almost all thrifted items on that. Those little paintings above it were thrifted. That basket I thrifted and I put some dried florals that I got last year from Joanne Fabrics in there. I did purchase that twig ball from the French Mercantile here in Somerville last year, and I did a video on that, so I'll try to link that if I can. That painting and that little clay house I thrifted as well, and that, I believe, is a tea light holder. The top of that little house comes off. And I just think that corner looks so pretty. I love all the colors in there. In front of my fireplace, I just have a collection of brass planters with some house plants in them. And that's a brass vase in the background. And then those really cool mid-century modern brass deer. We got those at a local antique store here in town. That's an antique uh, popcorn popper you see hanging on the side of my fireplace. And then panning around from there, I switched out the pillows that were on my blue chairs, the blue and white cushions for these fall pillows that I thrifted for 99 cents each, I think. Something crazy like that. And I will um, link the video, I think, where I, I showed those. But aren't they beautiful? Those beautiful, rich fall colors. Those two ruby red lamps we purchased at that same antique store where we got the brass deer and then the floral arrangement is from another shop in town. Now this is real life so panning over to my couch you can see we have I have those beautiful toile not toile but they're a kind of a French country scene on those pillows which were a Facebook mar marketplace find but I have those brown couch covers because of course we have dogs and they do sit on the furniture. And those are from Orvis. This is not sponsored by Orvis, but I'm telling you, if you have dogs and you are looking for something to cover your furniture that is high quality, I cannot recommend these enough. They have a gripper underneath, so they stay put on your couch and they're extremely soft. We purchased them in just that brown tweed. Um, that's sort of a classic color, but I think they come in several other colors and patterns. There's a close-up look at those pillows. And then over here, I simply placed another one of my Dollar Tree pumpkins on top of a stack of books and a moody piece of artwork with those fall colors. Sometimes less is more. And that's hard for me to say as a maximalist, but sometimes it really is. And that oil painting was one of my first thrifted finds. That was, I found that at Goodwill years ago. 
over here on this piece of furniture, which was the first antique piece of furniture that my parents ever bought as a married couple, I just have a candle from Antique Candle Company with a beautiful little fall um, bittersweet candle ring around it, some more dried florals, and some pumpkin colored candles or really squash colored candles. And then in the front room, and there's Phoebe looking out her window, I have a, just a few simple touches. That gorgeous mustard color blanket that I adore. We got that at that same store where we got the dried florals. It's called Cotton Down South and it's um, here in Somerville. And then on the um, ottoman, we have, a, <coughs> excuse me, an arrangement, which I'll show you in just a second, but I'm panning around to show you. My couch really stays like that year round, but this beautiful velvet pumpkin is from um, the French Mercantile. I got that last year half off after the season was over. And then these brass deer are my newest thrift find. I got those at a yard sale recently and they were $8 for the pair. I absolutely love them. And then this is a framed card. That's a card my mom sent me a couple years ago and I loved it. So I put it in a frame and I bring it out in the fall. And then tucked back behind it is another Dollar Tree pumpkin. I said mushrooms reminded me of fall. <laughs> I do love a good mushroom. And there's another look at the room and Phoebe. And then on the ottoman is a basket and an arrangement of dried florals and some more velvet pumpkins. I just love those colors. There's something about that champagne and then the kind of antique gold color and the chocolate brown, just beautiful. And that is the front room of my house. You may remember a few years ago, not a few years ago, a few months ago, I thrifted this beautiful lamp. I think it was my thrift find of the month one month. And then this really cute needlepoint stool. And then finally, I don't do a whole lot in the bedroom, but I do switch out some of our blankets and pillows to bring a fall feel into the bedroom. This gorgeous blanket at the foot of the bed is from TJ Maxx. I got that I think last year or maybe the year before. And the same with that beautiful velvet pillow. Oh, Phoebe, I think is, nope, that's Hazel. She's getting ready to bark, of course. And then really the rest of the room stays pretty much the same the year round. I have a stack of cozy fall blankets. And my bedding is, of course, from Brooklinen, which is one of my most favorite bedding companies. And there's a close-up of that pretty blanket. And that pillow I love because it has maple leaves on it, which, of course, remind me of Vermont. And then the last little bit of decor in the bedroom is on my desk. There is my collection of Beatrix Potter books held up with that little book um, bookend with this little mouse on it. The little, the nun figurine, which I thought was a planter, but my mom and another uh, viewer reminded me um, or informed me that that is actually for holy water. And then over here on the bureau, I have one more velvet pumpkin sitting on some dried florals and leaves on top of a gorgeous um, vintage bureau um, dresser mirror, whatever those are called. I'm not sure, I know there's a name for it, but it's a really gorgeous, it's probably, it may even be antique actually, it belonged to Truy's grandmother. And that's really it for what I've done so far in my house for fall. I hope you enjoyed this fall home tour seeing the little touches of fall that I have throughout my house. And now we have our relatively refined segment where we share our viewers' thrifted treasures. Today's treasure comes from our viewer, Debbie, who started thrifting as a young, financially challenged military wife. 
She was living far from home and the only things that she could afford were at yard sales and thrift stores. But over time, her home has become filled and curated with gorgeous items from her many military postings, some inherited pieces and some new to me pieces. Today, she is sharing something she found recently at her local Goodwill in Huntsville, Alabama. The first thing she found was the sugar bowl with no lid. It was $1.99. She thought it would make a cute decor piece, so she stuck it in her buggy, only to find the lid just down the aisle a bit, not priced separately. Further down the aisle, she found the creamer, and on the next aisle, the coffee pot. The creamer was also $1.99, and the coffee pot was $5.99. When she looked them up on eBay, to purchase that same set would have cost her $140. She spent less than 10. In fact, several people in the store admired the items in her buggy and the woman at the checkout counter told her that they were well worth the money. And indeed, Debbie, they were. Thank you so much for sharing these beautiful treasures. If you would like us to feature your thrifted treasures in one of our videos, simply send a picture of the item and a brief story in an email to the address on the screen and we would be happy to feature them in an upcoming video. All right, everyone, thank you so much for sticking with us. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, like it, share it with anyone you think who might enjoy the content and subscribe if you haven't. We are almost to 5,000 subscribers and we're going to do a fun giveaway. So help us get there and we will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.